Verdict, a sidebar production, hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy sponsors The Verdict. Also sponsored by Delta Dental, Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, and C.H. Guernsey and Company. Each week on The Verdict, we present an objective discussion of contemporary and legal issues, topical issues that will affect Oklahomans in their daily lives. The Verdict, a sidebar production. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and as always, I'm joined by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. And Kent will be back today to discuss part two of that landmark lawsuit of 20 years ago between Oklahoma and the NCAA, University of Oklahoma. How will today's show differ from last week's show? Well, first of all, we're having two different guests uh, that will, uh, I think, bring a different perspective into what we're talking about. And also, we're going to bring it more into the current day. What's happening now and what is likely to happen in the future with perhaps... Uh, uh, adjustments of the bowl championship series televising uh, arrangements and the uh, national playoff championship if there ever is one mm -hmm. but before we get to that uh, some of our uh, viewers have expressed some uh, lack of uh, information about how the Big 12 conference gets its games on TV it is confusing and I'd like to quickly walk through a graphic that we have okay. for, for our viewers to explain just generally what is the Big 12 plan as you can see on the left side the individual schools uh, basically assign their television rights to the Big 12 Conference uh, for handling. The uh, order of uh, priority first goes to ABC under the current contract, and ABC can pick within a certain uh, prescribed time period which game they want. And I've hypothetically uh, uh, moved this forward to the OU Texas game, which, by the way, ABC has selected as their game for that particular date in October. And the games not selected then become available to either TBS or Fox Sports for, for viewing, depending upon whose turn it is at bat between those two uh, networks. And I've, uh, uh, once again, uh, assumed that uh, they might select OSU and Kansas State, which, uh, who also play on that date. But the other schools that aren't selected then have, within some res uh, restraints, the right to freely uh, have their games televised locally or on pay-per-view, uh, and thanks for the graphic, pay-per-view or whatever other method they may choose to do it. I uh, spoke with the Big 12 uh, Conference office uh, yesterday, and uh, the first week of the season, uh, two Big 12 schools uh, actually used the Internet uh, and it had a streaming uh, system uh, in place for their fans to watch their games over the Internet rather than on uh, straight television. So basically, uh, that's how the system works for the Big 12 to select which teams are going to be televised. And the interesting thing is this step four on the graph where the individual schools have the right, if they're not selected, to do whatever they can to have their game on TV as long as they don't impinge on the same time periods that ABC is using, uh, and uh, as long as they meet other requirements. But it's pretty much a free and open competition system we have today, uh, in stark contrast to what we had uh, 20 years ago. It is a lot different. So where are we now? The universities of Oklahoma and Georgia challenged and won against the NCAA. It's now been over 20 years since that landmark television lawsuit was filed. Should be a lively discussion. We'll meet our guests when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Verdict is pleased to have as a sponsor C.H. Guernsey & Company, providing architectural and engineering services to clients throughout the U.S. and around the world. I'd like to offer my most sincere congratulations to the firm of Crow and Dunleavy, the employees and attorneys, uh, profound contributions to the state of Oklahoma for this past century, and I wish you well for this coming century. Thank you. Happy anniversary, Crow Dunleavy, and thank you for 100 years of providing quality legal service to the state of Oklahoma. We wish you much continued success and growth.
American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guests. On my right is Barry Trammell, a familiar name and perhaps a familiar face to many Oklahomans. Uh, Barry is from Norman. He uh, was with the Norman Transcript for a number of years and has been with the Oklahoman for a, a number of years more. Uh, was sports editor and is now a columnist and also is a radio talk show host. Has his own show on The Ref, K-R-E-F, called uh, The Sports Edge. Barry, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. We're pleased to have you. Across the table is Dean Blevins, also a very familiar name and face to Oklahomans that see this show. Uh, Dean uh, uh, has a distinction about him that I want to start off his, uh, his introduction with. In the last 40 years, there's been one person, this is a question, Mick. Okay. Last 40 years, there's been one person at OU that lettered in both uh, basketball and football. Who is it? That would be Dean Blevins. That would be Dean Blevins. <laughs> He's also, uh, getting more uh, closely uh, tied to the topic of the show, been for 15 years a network a TV uh, college football commentator. He's sports director at the KWTV and at KATT. And Dean, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Ken. Revolution in college football television. We've gone from 14 games in 1979 on television to over 400 now, at least 400 or so last year, maybe even more this year. Barry, let me ask you, uh, who won, really? Is this, is this a good result, this uh, uh, very heavy televising of college football? <clears throat> well, some people won, some people lost. Uh, the number one winner was the college football fan. You know, uh, I can remember as a kid all kinds of games I want to see. They're not on television. Oklahoma plays USC in 73, one of the epic games in OU history. Lynn Swan, Sam Bam Cunningham against the Selman brothers, Steve Davis, Joe Washington. Not on television. Now there's 14, 15 games a day on television. So college football fans come out the better in this deal. Dean, how do you see it? I don't know that anyone comes out a loser. Uh, the more games, the better. As far as a viewer goes, uh, a fan, and that's what this should be all about. Uh, the other thing that it's about, of course, is the player not trying to take advantage of him. But how's the player taken advantage of? Because you practice so you can be exposed. Uh, that's fun. Uh, the networks obviously aren't doing it if they're losing money, and the advertiser's not doing it unless it's a wise investment for him. So uh, people sit around and gripe and moan about it, but I think those are the same type of people that would gripe and moan about 72-degree weather out in Los Angeles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, uh, uh, staying with you for a minute, uh, one other fallout from this OU versus NCAA decision was in part conference realignment. Uh, Donnie Duncan has, uh, has said uh, to me uh, on a couple of occasions that he felt that that was a mixed bag on conference realignment because some uh, existing rivalries may be destroyed by conference realignment. A good example is not necessarily a destruction, but at least a, a diminution of the OU-Nebraska rivalry. We used to play Nebraska every year. Now, because of conference realignment, we're playing them every other year. Well, how do you see conference realignment? Uh, being affected. Well, maybe uh, maybe I'm just an optimist, but I think the Big 12 Conference is so much better than the Big 8 Conference. I think it's such a natural rivalry to have Oklahoma and Texas A&M play and uh, Texas Tech and Oklahoma State play that uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. I think you see that the Big 12 Conference has gotten so much more notoriety nationally than the Big 8 Conference got, and rightfully so. Uh, I wish that there were a couple of more regional 
uh, affiliations such as Arkansas involved in it. I had a recent conversation with Frank Broyles about this, and uh, Coach Broyles said that it, he was this close to joining the Big 12 Conference, and I'm trying to remember what happened at the very end. There was some school. It was uh, He was afraid that Texas was going to go out to the Pac-10. Remember when there was talk mm -hmm. about Texas and Colorado jumping out there in the last minute, and he sure didn't want to jump into the Big 12 Conference if they were going to lose that connection. So I like the current arrangement, and if OU can only play Nebraska every other year, as much as I loved it, we were 4-0. As much as I loved playing that uh, that series, I think it's it's for the best. Conference championship games. That's one thing conference realignment has brought about. And uh, there are some pluses and minuses to that. One obvious plus to that, Barry, is money. What do you generally think about uh, how conference championship games uh, fits? I like conference championship games because I like good games. Uh, one thing that's happened in college football in the last 15 years teams major major powers are scheduling victories in the 1970s Oklahoma played I think four non-conference games out of 40 against teams that weren't in a major conference now in the decade of 2000 I would estimate out of 30 non-conference games maybe 32 non-conference games Oklahoma will play about half against teams that aren't in a major conference so I like good matchups well is that a direct uh, result of them really putting a number on what you have to have to be in this bowl and another number to be in a certain this bowl. To, I mean, to be bowl eligible, is, is, is that what sponsored all that? I don't think it's a bowl eligibility. I think it's just... Uh, hey, scheduling wins. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> economics. Yeah, exactly. Part of it is economics, and part of it is, goes back to conference realignment. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma used to have two or three tough league games. Yeah. Now, Oklahoma, out of eight, has four, could be five, depending on the schedule, tough league games. They wanted to soften the non-conference yeah. schedule. Well, it's it's like uh, Coach Switzer used to say. He used to say, Robbie, you recruit championships. You know, you, you don't coach them. You recruit championships. And I think it's the same thing now. You schedule championships. You you schedule it, but you have a coaching staff. And I've heard Joe Castiglione say there are four facets to a program, and two of the most important ones are coaching and scheduling and then of course one of the third one of the fourth is is to have the, the great program but you can't line up and go play uh, Alabama and UCLA and USC and then go play the juggernaut schedule it's in the Big 12 conference Oklahoma has an off year I keep hearing people talk about this is Oklahoma's year like Texas last year to have a run well if you look at the Oklahoma schedule this year they play at Missouri with a new quarterback an up-and-coming coach that beat Illinois convincingly they play Texas, they play Iowa State, they play Colorado, and then they play at Texas A&M. Now, that's not an easy schedule. So if you jump in there at the beginning and you play Alabama and UCLA and USC, then you really have no chance to have scheduled yourself a chance to even have a chance to go play in the Big 12 Conference Championship game. Let me jump in here and get us to a break. One of the questions I want to get to when we get back is, was Oklahoma and Georgia's probations the result of that landmark NCAA case of 20 years ago? We'll be back on The Verdict. We are C.H. Guernsey & Company. We provide engineering, architecture, and consulting services to clients across the nation and around the world. Our corporate headquarters are located in Oklahoma City, and we have branch offices across the country, including Tulsa. We have provided quality service to clients for nearly 75 years. At Guernsey, we believe in quality work and unconditional client satisfaction. To learn more about C.H. Guernsey & Company, log on to our website at chguernsey.com. Bringing out the best in each student, that is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities. Parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys 
and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers back on the verdict with Dean Blevins and Barry Trammell. Barry, let me throw that at you. Do you think Oklahoma and Georgia went on probation after this lawsuit because of the lawsuit? I don't think so, but I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist. I know a lot of people are. Um, with the crimes OU committed, I don't know anything about Georgia, but the crimes OU committed, OU is admitted, admitted to committing. So uh, I don't think so. Dean? No, the crimes that were committed, if you want to use the word crimes, and in the athletic world it, they, they were crimes, uh, were committed for one reason, and that's to go win. And it didn't matter if that was Bud Wilkinson's bunch back in the 50s or Gomer who needed to cheat or Blake and Schnelly who really needed to cheat or, or Barry in there. The only reason you do that is to go win, and it didn't matter. Uh, the television issue was not, not a factor. Let me ask you about Friday night football, Friday night college football. How about Tuesday night and Wednesday night and Thursday night and yep. <laughs> Saturday night? Yeah, it's, it's on yeah. every night. The, the Friday night is distinguished because it's typically right, high school exactly. night. exactly. And the high schools take a dim view of the uh, colleges and universities invading that. Uh, uh, some of the uh, minor conferences or mid-major conferences, as, as they like to be called, are going with ESPN on Friday night football. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you think the future of that would be, Barry? I think it's a bad idea for major programs to play on Friday night, and I think they think so, too. You're not seeing Michigan or Oklahoma or Texas playing on Friday night. They except don't want, last, they don't want except to, against Tulsa. Well, but see, but that was a, I don't think Oklahoma and Tulsa would have played if the Oklahoma high school season that's had right. started. That's right. I mean, that's the only reason uh, OU agreed to do that. And Tulsa also. I don't think either program would want to do that. The only people you're seeing going to play on Friday night are programs that have been sort of shut out of the major network uh, slots. You're seeing uh, Conference USA, the WAC, the Mountain West Conference. These are guys, these are, these are leagues that sort of got uh, pushed out. Or are right? they the losers in this whole deal? They're the guys that, that got, uh, got sort of the shaft from the, uh, from the uh, Supreme Court decision because they no longer had a piece of the pie. They were on their own to negotiate with ESPN or ABC, and, of course, they're low down on the pecking, uh, the pecking order. Let me jump in because I sort of agree but have a different perspective on this Friday night thing. Uh, how many high schools, uh, how many games do we have on Friday? I mean, not me very many. I hated calling them for ESPN. I particularly hated calling Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday night games. It was very bizarre, especially travel, but uh, that's a, a, an issue that's... Uh, that's uh, not not really an issue here um, but Friday night games they don't affect many people they affect one or two or three four games probably less than that the problem is what Barry started to allude to in my opinion and, and that is Oklahoma doesn't want to infringe on the Oklahoma coaches the high school yeah. people that's the lifeblood they don't want to get the Texas coaches upset with them because they're hurting the crowd they want the focus the coaches do in those states on their programs their teams and so that's who they're, they're most worried about. If you'll notice, the, where, we, where we're seeing high school, uh, college football played on Friday night are not high school hotbeds. Yeah. Utah, mm -hmm. Hawaii, places like that. Yeah. You know, you won't see this happening in Alabama. Florida, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas. You won't see that. Yeah. Well, what about the current uh, BCS structure? Uh, about the way it's organized, the way teams are selected to be in the uh, bowl championship series. What do you think about that? Oh, I like it. Uh, I think it can be tinkered with, but I like it. I think it's I think it's just the bowl system that we've always had, except we're ensuring the best possible uh, national championship game instead of uh, jerry rigging where teams are apart. You know, one undefeated team in the Rose Bowl, one un undefeated team in the Orange Bowl. We're getting them together. I mean, I think it's a I think it's a a, a worthy uh, system. Kent and Mick, I don't know that we're very good guests for you. I think that we think we follow it pretty closely, and I, I guess where we're both coming from is. The system's not that bad. You know, they've been doing this for a long time. And mm -hmm. the people that run it, they've got packed stadiums. They've got multi-million dollar contracts. They've got the renovation. They've got great quality play. And all that means is that they're running the thing pretty well. Is the BCS a good idea? Yeah. Uh, can it be tweaked? Yes. And are they doing it? Yes, they do it every year. And does there need to be a playoff? 
Yes, yes there does need to be a playoff, and that may be where you're going next. Well, but if, it's a pretty good uh, system as it is right now. It's better. But if we're headed to a playoff, why don't we just have a playoff? I mean, why does everyone say we're going to have to have a playoff in the future, but right now everyone says this is such a great system? We do have a playoff. We have a two-team playoff, and it's the best playoff in sport. We could go to four, we could go to eight, we could go to 16, we could go to 128. But right now we've got a two-team playoff, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great system. Well, it's prediction time, if, if you don't mind. If you do, well, that's all right. You don't have to. I'd like to get uh, your idea, Barry, and then I'll go to Dean. Uh, Barry, who's going to be the Big 8 champion? Big 12, Big 12 champion. Um, I like uh, Oklahoma because of its defense. I think the Sooners, uh, well, that defense is not going to have an off day. It's not going to slump. I like uh, Oklahoma. I am going to take uh, Miami to repeat as the national champion. They've got an incredibly tough non-conference schedule, but if they can survive uh, most of it, they could probably even lose one game and make uh, the title game, make the Fiesta Bowl. So I'm going to take Miami over Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. Dean? Um, I think the Oklahoma-Texas game right now is a toss-up. I think we're going to know a lot in the next couple of weeks about Oklahoma's uh, running game. Can they run against teams other than Tulsa? If they can, they're going to be able to be balanced, and if you're not balanced, you can't win. So I think that the Oklahoma-Texas game is a toss-up, and the winner there wins the Big 12 Conference against Kansas State. I like Kansas State to upset all those other teams. And the team that I like is Tennessee. Uh, Casey Clawson is a veteran quarterback. He was highly recruited. He's as good as he was when he was recruited, and their players are as good as, as there is in the country and probably better than about 115 teams. Hmm. Very good. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. We're going to wrap it up. Kent and I will be back for a final word after this. For Crow and Dunleavy, I've both given and received. I've given my daughter an associate, and I've also received Crow and Dunleavy legal services. I think Carrie's a pretty capable person, and the legal services I've received have been first rate. But what most impresses me about Crow and Dunleavy is its long-term commitment to the state and to the community. Service is everything to the law firm, a full-service firm of outstanding, integrity-filled people. Happy birthday, Crow and Dunleavy. Have another 100 years of great success. I want to congratulate Crow Dunleavy not just for reaching this wonderful milestone of its 100th anniversary, but for establishing during that 100 years the highest standards of integrity and, pe and professionalism and dedicated public service that's really set the mold and set the standard for law practitioners throughout the state of Oklahoma and throughout the nation. We're back to wrap up another edition of The Verdict. And Ken, I want to ask you a question. This has all been, always been called an antitrust lawsuit. But it, in my mind, it was really uh, two schools who were internally involved in a group. And how could they be considered uh, competitors? How could that be an antitrust suit? Well, it depends on what you're talking about in, insofar as what is the product. The product here was the, uh, the televising of college football. And in that connection, each college or university is, product is its own. And the NCAA is simply a, uh, an amalgamation of competitors. OU is a competitor of Georgia. Georgia is a competitor of Tennessee, and so on. On the sale so of they're an television rights. They're, it's a separate product for which there's a separate market, the market of the TV networks. And uh, it's an industry. And what under the NCAA plan was happening was that the two most important things in a free market were being restrained. Uh, price was being held high under the NCAA plan, and output, how many games would be on TV, was being held low. Those are two no-nos under the antitrust law. We've got to, in a free market, allow competition to determine that, not the competitors. You would not want, for instance, uh, in Oklahoma City, all the plumbing contractors to get together and say, we are all going to agree that uh, on a particular after-hours call, only one of us will go and the rest of you will stay home and we'll agree on what the price is going to be. Mm -hmm. The consumer would, would have much fewer options in that regard and pay a higher price. That's all the NCAA television plan was, was in a, a group of competitors agreeing to, to uh, have price high and restrain output. As part of that legal team, when you first heard about the lawsuit, how, 
how convinced were you that it was winnable? Well, the first, Andy and Clyde came in to talk to me about it right when it first came in, and they didn't really tell me who was involved, and I just said, I can't believe this is really going on. This is a classic cartel. Uh, the, and then they told me uh, under what circumstances it was happening uh, in, at the university level and at the NCAA level, and I was absolutely astounded that that was going on and that nobody had uh, complained about it up to now. Or up to then. So they were afraid. Well, Most likely. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, as we learned from our previous show with, uh, with Andy Coates and Clyde Muchmore, the universities of Oklahoma and Georgia didn't uh, get into this lawsuit lightly, didn't take it lightly once they were in it. And uh, it is interesting to note that, uh, that in that case, they did not seek damages. OU and Georgia did not seek money from the NCAA. Uh, they did not seek money from their, their uh, sister institutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, they sought simply what's called an injunction, stop this, don't do it anymore, let us go compete in the free market. It's a case that has had enormous impact across this country from the standpoint of conference realignment, how national champions are, are uh, selected, uh, and, and how many uh, games a particular viewer may be able to see at home. And it's, it's uh, interesting, uh, the amount of money per university has gone up uh, enormously, uh, even though the output is up. That's a little uh, counterintuitive to some economists. Uh, the other thing uh, that has happened is that the price per spot for an advertiser to advertise on a college football game has gone down. Who pays the cost of advertising ultimately? It's the consumer. And so the consumer is getting more games. Uh, and. If you can say they pay for it, they pay for it through buying a product that is advertised, and they're, they're paying a lesser amount of that price is attributable to the advertising cost than was true in the past. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, thing that OU and Georgia did. We're going to get out of here. Thanks again to our guests, Dean Blevins and Barry Trammell. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict.